Newman Systems Model by Courtney Dietring, Sarah Flagg, Amy Grohl, and Cindy Lohr. This presentation is focused on presenting information on the Newman Systems Model and its creator, Betty Newman. We will also examine how it is utilized in our chosen article, Newman Systems Model as a Conceptual Framework for Nurse Resilience. Betty Newman was born in 1924 and grew up in a farm in Ohio. This rural background is credited for her sense of compassion, which led her to pursue a nursing career. She attended People's Hospital School of Nursing in Akron to obtain her initial nursing degree. She continued on to earn a bachelor's degree in public health and psychology and then a master's in mental health and public health consultation from UCLA. Finally, she completed her PhD in clinical psychology at Pacific Western University in 1985. She developed her systems model while teaching at UCLA in 1970. Since that time, she has been published multiple times and served as both a lecturer and consultant on the application and use of the model. Newman drew inspiration from a variety of philosophical views to form her model. It is based on general system theory and reflects on the nature of living organisms as open systems in interaction with each other and with the environment. Gestalt theory describes homeostasis as the process by which an organism maintains its equilibrium, and consequently its health, under varying conditions. Adjustment is the process the organism uses to satisfy its many needs. The ability to satisfy these needs is a balancing act, relating back to homeostasis. If the process fails and balance is not achieved, illness may result, followed by death if the organism is unable to compensate. Marx's philosophy suggests that the properties of parts are determined partly by the larger wholes within dynamically organized systems. Newman confirmed that the patterns of the whole influence awareness of the part. Deschardin's philosophy of the wholeness of life also contributed to this assumption. According to Selle, the essence of stress is the nonspecific demand for activity. Newman used this definition of stress, which is the nonspecific response of the body to any demand made on it. Stress increases the demand for readjustment. This is nonspecific. It requires adaptation to a problem. Newman adapts the concept of levels of prevention from Kaplan's conceptual model and relates these prevention levels to nursing. Primary prevention is used to protect the organism before it encounters a harmful stressor. This involves reducing the possibility of encountering the stressor or strengthening the client's normal line of defense to decrease the reaction to the stressor. Secondary prevention attempts to reduce the effect or possible effect of stressors through early diagnosis and effective treatment of illness symptoms. Newman describes this as strengthening the internal lines of resistance. Tertiary prevention attempts to reduce the residual stressor, stressor effects and return the client to wellness after treatment. Next, we will discuss the major concepts of the Newman Systems Model. This diagram of the basic structure of the Newman Systems Model shows how the stressors interact with the lines of defense. It also outlines reactions, interventions, reconstitution, and primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. The human being is viewed as an open system that interacts with both internal and external environment forces or stressors. The human is in constant change, moving toward a dynamic state of system stability or toward illness of varying degrees, referring again to homeostasis. The environment is a vital arena that is germane to the system and its function. The environment may be viewed as all factors that affect or are affected by the system. The internal environment exists within the client system. All forces and interactive influences that are solely within boundaries of the client system make up this environment. The external environment exists outside the client system. Health is defined as the condition or degree of system stability and is viewed as a continuum from wellness to illness. When system needs are met, optimal wellness exists. When needs are not satisfied, illness exists. When the energy needed to support life is not available, death occurs. The primary concern of nursing is to define the appropriate action and situation that are stress-related or in relation to possible reactions of the client or client system distressors.
According to Newman, nursing considers all the variables of a person, or the whole person. This means taking into account a client's variances such as current emotional state and physical health and psychosocial factors. As the caregiver perception of the client influences the quality of care they receive, consistent quality of care should be given along with individualized care plans. An assessment of the nurses and client perceptions should be performed. This will help to rule out any biases and misconceptions that will influence the nurse-client relationship. Having a trusting and respectful relationship between the nurse and the client will result in positive outcomes. The person is an open client system in reciprocal interaction with the environment. The environment greatly affects the decisions and actions made by the person. The person, in this case, may be an issue, an individual, or a group of people. The client system is multifaceted, involving interrelationships among physiological, psychological, sociocultural, developmental, and spiritual factors. All these factors are important when considering the person as a whole. Health is a fluid concept, like a pendulum. It constantly swings from wellness to illness in a back and forth motion. Newman explains that in order to reach an optimal level of wellness, the needs of the total system must be met. Thus, illness results from unmet needs of the system. Environment is defined as influential internal and external factors surrounding the person. Internal environment includes interpersonal factors affecting the client. An example of this would be a client's feelings of self-esteem and confidence. The external environment may be interpersonal or extrapersonal factors, any factors outside the client. This may be an experience that a client has had, such as experience, experiencing physical abuse as a child. Created environment is an unconscious, supportive, protective coping, usually interpersonal. A coping mechanism influences all the systems and creates a buffering effect between the client and environmental stressors. An example of a coping mechanism would be the use of denial in order to avoid a situation. Resilience is the process of adapting while in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or significant sources of stress. Resilience is an important trait for a nurse to possess. This article uses the Newman Systems model to expand on nurse resiliency. It also provides strategies for improving resiliency in nurses. The Newman System theory deals with the patient's response to stress. This includes stressors, the patient's response to stress, and the use of prevention techniques to maintain their health. These ideas are broken into primary, secondary, and tertiary levels of prevention. The article by Turner and Kaler uses the same ideas to discuss nursing resilience. The theory is used to determine nurses ha have to identify risk factors and prevent stressors, recognize problems and implement interventions, and decrease or eliminate stress response. Using these steps, nurse can build, nurses can build resilience to care for themselves, prevent emotional fatigue, and decrease burnout. Newman reports that the model was designed for nursing but can be used by other health disciplines, which can be viewed as either a strength or a weakness. As a strength, if multiple health disciplines use the model, a consistent approach to client care would be facilitated. As a weakness, if the model is useful to a variety of disciplines, it is not specific to nursing and thus may not differentiate the practice of nursing from that of other disciplines. Personal Application of Courtney Dietring, who works in the Neurotrauma ICU. One of my favorite things about working in the ICU is that because we have a smaller nurse-to-patient ratio, ICU nurses are afforded more time to get to know the whole story. We know everything there is to know about each patient. We have to, because we treat the whole person. The sickest patients aren't in the ICU for a singular reason. They have multiple stressors attacking their bodies at once, creating multi-system issues. These may be external stressors, such as suffering a trauma, or internal stressors like sepsis. Managing this patient population is a balancing act. Our ultimate goal is to restore homeostasis within the body to achieve the best possible outcome. The Newman Systems model is certainly applicable to the ICU setting, especially when considering the importance of balance in an open system. The same goes for working as a nurse in the ICU setting. Trying to keep a sense of balance between what happens at work and in life outside of work is extremely important in building resilience in nurses. Sarah Flagg's clinical application, working in the medical surgical unit. 
The Benny Newman system model can be applied in many various areas throughout a typical work shift. A common stressor many nurses are feeling currently is a shortage of staffing. My floor was shut down last year for a couple of months due to low staffing. It reopened several months ago and has done well until the last few weeks. Our charge nurse is always having to put in requests for the float pool nurses because we will have just two or three nurses scheduled on shifts. It is stressful in a daily capacity as we have to manage our time wisely when we are performing short staffed. It is also stressful with the thought of our floor possibly shutting down again. Using this model, I could identify risk factors as not being staffed appropriately each shift, and these can be primarily prevented with new hires or pooling nurses from floors that are overstaffed. Secondary interventions I personally found to work are wise time management, clustering care is appropriate, and working as a team. My floor is great during the night shift to work as a team, and we each do things to help each other out when others are busy with another patient. Tertiary interventions interventions to decrease or eliminate the stress, such as constant appropriate staffing, would be a dream, but just getting enough nurses on the floor each day is a relief in itself. Amy Grohl, Clinical Application in the Emergency Department. My entire career has been in emergency and trauma nursing. I take care of patients and their family members when they are at the most stressful and vulnerable points in their lives. There are many stressors that go along with having a sick or injured family member. My ultimate goal is to assist in reducing stress so that patient can recover and return to their regular home life in the shortest amount of time possible. The tough reality with trauma patients is that they may never recover to their baseline. Just as the model describes, the patient's environment is, infect is affected with which completely changes their way of life. Teaching these patients is challenging. Newman's model applies to every nursing area, but especially to the ED, as we are constantly getting hit with stressors and having to react to these stressors and intervene accordingly. Cindy Lohr's clinical application on a medical surgical floor. Currently, I am working on a med surg unit at the hospital and find that this theory is applicable every day and encounters with my clients. For instance, I use primary intervention when I am performing a fall assessment on my patients. The most important fall precautionary action healthcare providers can take is identifying a patient's fall risk. During the initial assessment on my patient, I use the fall rating scale to either identify a patient as a fall risk or not a fall risk. Once a patient has been identified as a potential risk, we can begin to initial a initiate a series of preventive in interventions, such as the use of bed alarms. This is considered a secondary intervention. Lastly, to ensure that the patient does not experience any falls, we educate them on the need to call for assistance and provide medication and physical therapy as they continue to rehabilitate. This continuum of care is a tertiary intervention. That concludes our presentation.